it's just the history that affects it. It affects the point of view that we see it. Cultures are different between like the white community and the black community. I feel like white people have a little bit more privilege. And like second chances. The point that you can be everywhere, anywhere, it is white privilege. Probably like seven to ten percent. I don't know. High up, probably over fifty. I would probably say it's high. Um, Seventy, eighty-five percent of suspensions are of African Americans. <laughs> I would say probably a larger majority than white students. At least fifteen percent. I mean, I know that it's disproportionate, but I would hesitate to guess a number. It's 70% of the suspensions. Well, that's problem. <laughs> that's bad. The reason, well, um, as a white person, you're given the benefit of the doubt that there is a reason for why you do the things you do. As a person of color, if you act out, you are seen as an animal, you're dangerous. It's just from the behaviors, I think, or from the um, history of, of how we treat, we used to treat them, so. If they want to treat us bad, if they want to treat the white people the same way, it's completely kind of understandable. So the only reason as to why this exists is simply because of uh, uh, this this gang mentality that most black students may have. Basically, if you behave normally, what would be defined as normally, then that's identified as correct behavior. So if you're in a cultural environment that is primarily, um, let's say, affluent and white, then the norms of behavior are set by that cultural group. I, I blame it on the home life, mostly, because it's really how a person is raised that determines their actions in society. African Americans are treated a little bit worse. Like, I know teachers aren't racist or anything, but I think a lot of the times supervisors and such might like look out more for kids who are like of different skin colors other than white. Uh, instigating fights or conflicts amongst other students, which is also distracting and harmful. I always hear about the fights between the black kids at lunch by the coffee shop, but there are fights between white people all the time too. Like, you see fights between everyone because everyone fights. It's like a human instinct to fight. I feel like white people have a little bit of a privilege and like second chances, more second chances. One thing that helps is like cultural awareness training. And, and the district is doing that. Uh, with, with, I mean, we have a new initiative, they've been working on it for uh, a while now, to teach um, teachers, basically, to sort of check their initial gut reactions. Are you telling this black kid to stop acting obnoxious, like you know, a lot of kids his age do, because he's black, or is it because you would do the same thing if he was a white kid? Throughout the next generations, like, there's no way like we can create any rules that are gonna like prevent that, I don't think, because there are rules in place that say that like racism is not allowed, suspending someone because their skin color is not allowed. What black people can do is in their communities they can stop instigating this uh, hood mentality. I guess you need to start with the disciplinary methods closer in elementary school because by the time they reach high school it's kind of rebellious attitudes and student and people in general are usually instilled. Like it's not just African Americans, it can also be others. Maybe try and reach out to those that want help. Because I feel like if it's a, if it's a repeated number it's like if it's a repeated person that consistently gets suspended, then I feel like then that's when you should like try and see, reach out to people that want help. And so I think that it requires education on both sides, that we need to all be aware that there's not just one default right way of doing things. We try to eliminate stereotypes and like base our judgment of people on what they say, what they think, how they act rather than their skin color and stop associating certain actions with certain groups of people, then that will solve that problem. We need to look at everyone's actions as either bad or good. Like, it, I don't care what you look like, I don't care about your background, you either did something bad or you did something good. And so I think that's going to be the way that, like, you have to go back to like the purest basic instinct to like solve the root of the problem, bad or good.